Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. I'm so excited to be able to, to worship alongside all of you. Before we get started, can we just pray together and uh, open up our hearts into, or just um, give our hearts up to God and what he's going to do in this service. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for the story that you've given us. Um, such a, a wonderful story that um, we never would have guessed, but uh, we're so glad that you've given it to us in this way. Um, we love that we get to sing songs to you. We love that you accept our offering um, in this service, and we are so grateful that we know that you are here. We love you, and in your awesome name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together. Did you know? 
Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, for communion message today, I want to tell you a story about my community and how I really think it's going to make a big difference. So let's rewind about five, six, seven years. There's a young girl who uh, is going to school and college, and she's doing really well. The world is her oyster. She feels like LA is the place that all the great things are going to happen. The great medical schools are there. Um, Newsflash, this person is me. So we're going to school at UCLA, Connor and I, and um, we start talking about our future a little bit. And I could be quoted saying, I never want to live in Orange County. We'll get there. So uh, I'm thinking that, you know, like I said, LA is the place where all the great things are going to happen. As I start to research graduate schools, you know, the, the big names pop out to me, the Dukes, the Emerys, the Cornells, like that's where I'm supposed to be. I really feel like I'm supposed to go there. Um, but Connor's talking to me about his hometown, which is everything my hometown and that Los Angeles isn't. It's safe, it's clean, it's loving. I'm like, eh, it's boring. Nah, great things don't happen here, I don't know. I had this, this vision, I think we can all think of a time where we, had, we felt so clear in what we needed to be doing and what, where we needed to be, um, and we were gonna do anything to do that. So as Connor and I prayed and just kind of went through our relationship, little bits of information kept coming from kind of unlikely sources. Uh, there was a friend 
that I had met through this church that said, you know, if you really want to practice in California, practice medicine in California, you really need to study here. It's hard to come back from a different school. And I learned that to be true, and I said, okay, I'll take that under advisement, but I still, I have a plan for me. You know, I'm going to go do this. Um, and then one of his childhood um, neighbors, lived on the same street as him, was like, you know, there's this really great school in Fullerton. And I said, oh, are you sure? Let me check it out. It was incredible. I was like, oh, this has been under my nose this whole time. Well, I'll consider it. But again, it's, I don't know. I'll, I'll just consider among all these other options that I think are better for me. And, you know, and then we go and we live our lives. And then someone's like, hey, we're starting this new church service. Uh, it's called Unite. And do you want to speak? Do you want to kind of be plugged in this? Um, do you want to be one of, like, the main members of the service of a church that I've never been a part of before. I didn't grow up in a church, and I was like, you know, being part of a church community sounds pretty great. And then a year later, Connor gets this offer from this high school that loves him as much as he loves it. And before I know it, I was like, I really want to stay here. You know, in a few years, life had completely 180'd. And then suddenly we're getting this call that I got accepted to the school in Fullerton, and we're sobbing tears of joy because our roots have been established here. So the first obvious lesson is God changes your heart, right? We always pray for that. We, oh, God, please change my heart, you know, tune my heart to sing your praises and your grace and those lyrics I can't remember right now. Um, and he does, and I think that's obvious. But what I really want to talk about is what happens in the background. So uh, when Connor was in middle school, he befriended this woman named Nicole. And as it so happened... Nicole, who I've only met once or twice, I went to her baby shower. This is going to sound really random. And I found out that one of the main professors at the school that I really needed to get into in Fullerton, the professor is like her uncle's best friend in like their whole life. And I said, that's crazy. And she said, oh, I'll talk to him for you. And I said, no, 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 please don't. Like, I don't want any personal anything to go on there. So I walk into my interview at the school in Fullerton, and who is sitting in front of me? But Connor's neighbor's uncle's best friend. What? So I find out later that that man had gone to their family, like his friend's family, didn't talk about me, but just they said they knew that he, he knew he was going to interview me for other reasons. He really liked me. But after I got accepted to this school where I never thought I was going to want to be and never thought that I was going to know that this was my place for me, I heard this story that it had been in the work since Connor was making friends in middle school. Not saying that that brought me here, but I'm saying that God shows himself a little bit, I think, in community. That in the friends that Connor's made and the friends that I've made here, this church service, being up here and just speaking today and seeing all the people that I've met, it's community. And, and it wouldn't be special if God didn't do it. You know, and as we take communion today, I you know, close your eyes, pray, be by yourself, but also just take a look around, like, you know, turn your head, look at the people behind you. It's special, and I just really wanted to highlight that today. So if you'll pray with me. Uh, dear God, we are, we are so in your debt. We are so grateful for the people that you've provided in our lives, whether it be a one time on a street or um, every single Sunday, every single day in our lives. We we know you have a purpose for everything and that you do change our hearts to fit the plan that you have for us. And I pray for every single person in this room that they, they latch on to that and that we can pray united together that we as a church can follow your will and that we, we as a church can have our heart that reflects you. Uh, thank you for this community, God. And um, as we go into this Christmas season, I pray for all the communities and the ones that are broken, the ones that need help. Just reach reach down, be their peace, um, be their love. We are so grateful for you, God. And in Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen.
right, can we have our little worship leaders come up and lead us in joy to the world? Everyone, will you please stand? Yeah! Yeah, little worship leaders. Would you like my mic? Always. Okay, here you go. Or you can use this one. Just one, just one, just one. Hi. Um, So if you were involved at all in the show, would you come up and help us with hand motions? And we can do the hand motions if we want for Joy to the World, if we remember. Hi. All right. So let's sing Joy to the World. Is that the key? I don't know. Whatever you play, I'll follow. Hi. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to Coloring pages. Take a bow. Thank you. All right, you may be seated. There are coloring pages in the back for um, anyone willing to do that. And then there is a prize box upstairs if anyone would like to get a prize for their coloring page. Kids only. All right, good morning. Hello. Um, I'd like to introduce you the speaker for today. It's me. <laughs> you don't have to clap. I just like doing that every time because uh, usually it's like the speaker for today is da da da, and you can't clap, and then they come up, but you have me today. So um, before we get started, I'd like to pray just because um, it helps us get into the mindset of receiving God's word. So let's pray together. Dear God, um, thank you. For grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for a story of love and forgiveness and not of war. Um, thank you for saving us from ourselves. Even though we disregard and disobey your, your commands, you keep chasing after us. And I don't understand it, but I just know that you are the father, the, the best father I know. And I'm so grateful for your love for me, this community, this world. Um, We love you, and we can't wait to hear what you have to say. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. In your awesome name we pray. Amen. So it's the Sunday before Christmas, and I was thinking about this message, and I was thinking about how to make this message really cheery and joyful, because usually this time of year is very cheery and joyful. And for some reason, another message kept coming in. And uh, I'm sorry if this message isn't as cheery and joyful as Usually Christmases are, but I needed to hear this message. And I think I'm preaching it because I need to hear it, but someone in this room might need to hear it too. Maybe this entire community needs to hear it. Um, If my knee buckles at any time, just ignore it. It's not the spirit like overcoming me. It's my knee. It's weak. I'm almost 30, and apparently that happens. But um, so I want to get started today with a quote. Um, And... Please forgive me, bear with me, this, this, today is about peace, and I'll get there. So stay with me throughout the entire sermon, because this message really is about peace, but not in the way that you would think. The quote says, this Christmas season finds us a rather bewildered human race. We have neither peace within nor peace without. Everywhere, paralyzing fears harrow people by day and haunt them by night. Our world is sick with war. Everywhere we turn, we see its ominous possibilities. 
Now, I'd love to tell you, or this, this quote actually sounds like it's f from yesterday or from earlier this morning, because really, our world looks just like that, doesn't it? I'm afraid. There's a lot of fear in this world. There's a lot of restlessness. There's a lot of destruction. You see it in the news every day. That's the reason why I, uh, I left social media, because I needed to stop seeing it for a while. But in fact, this quote comes from Martin Luther King Jr.'s sermon from 1967. And it's a Christmas sermon. I took it directly from the sermon. I, in grad school, I took a, a Martin Luther King class. And I had one, I thought I, it would be one way. And in reality, um, Martin Luther King ended up being one of my heroes in history. Um, I knew who he was, and I've studied him throughout school. But to read all, all of his sermons, which it's, it's a lot. Have you seen his book? It's like this big. But it's a lot of sermons. And you read all of his sermons, and they're inspiring. I wonder what the world, what the nation would look like today if we had a pastor like Martin Luther King leading us. Because his messages, all of them, were challenging, were painful because they were honest. They were the truth that we needed to hear, that everyone needed to hear, no matter what race you were. I, I would be reading his sermons or listening to them, and I would cry because they were real. It wasn't just, hey, um, let go of this, and then you'll be happy and you'll be joyful. It was, hey, there's um, some hard stuff we need to deal with, but don't worry, we're doing it together. Because, and God is not leaving us alone in this. And yes, they were hard messages, but they gave us hope. He gave us hope because these messages reminded us that no matter how hard things get, and in his time, things were very hard. No matter how hard things get, God will prevail. God will always win. God is winning, no matter how it looks. And it looks pretty bad today, honestly. It looks kind of bad. But God is winning. God will win. Peace will will be on this earth. We will see peace one day. But not in the way that we thought we could get to it. And what I mean is, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. Let me start with the story first. The story of the Israelites is a messy one. If you've read any of the Old Testament, it's kind of like up and down. It's a novella. You think that, the, oh yes, they're, they're uh, and if you don't know what a novella is, it's a, it's a Spanish soap opera. Don't watch one. It's very, it's very emotionally, like, just, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. But it's, uh, it's up and down. You think there's a happy ending, and all of a sudden there's destruction, and, and they mess up again. And you think, oh, my gosh, Israel got it. They, they finally got it. And then, nope, nope, they messed it up again. And Israel finally got it. Oh, they're reunited with God. Nope, there's more destruction. And that's their story. So much war, so, so much blood, to the point where they experienced 400 years of silence from God. And in that 400 years, there was a lot of war. They were um, overcome by the Greeks. They were ruled by the Greeks for a while. And then they were ruled by the Egyptians. They came in and, and decided to make, some ho make home and destroy some stuff. And then they were, were ruled by the Assyrians. More stuff was destroyed. The, design, the temple was destroyed count, uh, just a ton of times. And then the Romans came in over and over again, the Israelites saw war, and they thought every time that somehow peace would be brought in in this way. And no, in those 400 years of silence, they did not hear God speak in any of the wars. Until 400 years after the last message that they received from God, finally God spoke. And the Israelites thought that God would speak in a way with a, in the way of a, the sword, that he would bring a war that would win all wars, that he would come in, destroy all of their enemies, that Israel would be the only nation left on the world, and they would rule. That's what they thought. That's what they hoped. In the 400 years of silence, I think that's what they looked forward to. But instead, God spoke the most glorious message we know, the message of hope that we need, the message of peace that we never thought he would give in this way. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. 
the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. And they, they probably thought, oh my gosh, is he in robes? Is he, in, is he surrounded by gold? Is, is he on a horse? Can you imagine a baby on a horse? Like that, that's just kind of awkward. But they, they probably thought, the glorious king, he's going to destroy the Romans tomorrow. But instead, this is the sign that was given. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Instead, the story started like this, and while they were there, this is talking about Joseph and Mary, while they were there, the time came for her baby, Mary's baby, to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for him. The story of peace began with the most humblest beginnings. All of the war that the Israelites saw culminated in this moment that where salvation was fi finally brought to the world through the, and it started with the story of a baby. I just gave birth to a baby. She's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, she shows me every day that she just gets cuter and cuter. Um, if you see those cheeks, oh, they're just so cute. But um, I remember, I remember, I kind of remember, I, I, I remember bu go, building up to the moment where she was born. Um, there was a lot of movement. There was a lot of che uh, checking. I remember when they said, all right, it's time to push. And I remember when Stephen walked into the room and they said, it's time to push. And his eyes were like, oh gosh, this is happening. We're having a baby. And my eyes were like, oh my gosh, something's going to come out of me. Okay, I, I got to get ready. There was a lot of movement. They were moving things. They were getting stuff ready. And there was pushing, people were yelling at me, it was very stressful. And finally, the baby came out. She came out, Lila was born. I cried, a lot. And I held her, and I remember when everyone left, and it was just Stephen and, and, and the baby and I. And it was the quietest moment I've ever known. Just thinking about it makes me cry. It was the most peaceful moment I've ever known because she was just wrapped up, ooh, wrapped up against my chest sleeping, closed, or her eyes were closed, and she was just warm. And, and Have you ever heard a baby breathe? If you haven't, it's the most calming experience. Her, just her breathing, I could hear it, and I felt everything just wash away. All of the trauma of, the, of labor, which um, women, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of things happening. All of that forgotten. I had never felt such joy than the moment I held my daughter and heard her breathe against my chest. Imagine Mary experiencing that kind of peace. That was how God decided to bring peace in this world, was through a baby lying in a manger, not through swords and blood and de more death. There was enough death in the world. There is enough death in the world, isn't there? There's enough war. I feel like we've had so many centuries, thousands of years of war that we, we should know it's not working to get peace that way. Martin Luther King says later in his, in his sermon that even the greatest, most fearful, fearless uh, generals that caused the most destruction in this world had some idea or desire for peace. He even said that it, in Hitler's Mein Kampf, there's some desire that he wanted to get peace, but in the cruelest of ways. Peace on earth, let's just agree here, peace on earth does not happen through war and destruction. You can't fight evil with just more evil. You can't fight death with more death. If you want to beat death, you bring life into the picture, and that's what God did. He brought life through the, the breathing of a baby. And the shepherds came, and they saw this baby, and just imagine everyone staring at a baby. Our family, when we brought Lila home, we didn't have the TV on for days. We just stared at her. And if you've ever seen a newborn, they don't do much. They lay there. I mean, she moves every now and then. She'll yawn. We start crying, bursting in tears. Or she'll, she'll just move her hands, and we're just, you just look at her. That's how peace was brought into this world. That's how peace was introduced into this world. When God fought the war within ourselves, the, the war of sin in ourselves, he didn't fight it with more death. He fought it with love and grace and mercy. So how do we think this world is going to be saved? Is it going to be saved through more destruction, more division? 
No, it's going to be saved through love, mercy, and grace. Martin Luther King's dream, what, his ultimate goal was nonviolence. And uh, he believed that on an international scale, we should be nonviolent. Because, and his reasoning was, has it worked this far? No. And his philosophy was that everybody in this world was interrelated. There were no border lines. There was no division of races. Because we all come from the same place. We come from God. And the way that we achieve peace is not through telling people what to do or making people join some sort of club or making people live a certain way. It's to be reminded that there were never any lines or divisions to begin with. We created those on our own. And he believed that we should be worried about, we should be concerned about our brothers and sisters in India, in Asia, in, in the Middle East, in Africa, everywhere. We should be concerned because we are interrelated. We rely on each other. I have to be honest. I think of peace selfishly a lot. And what I mean is, I want peace just for myself. I want peace from my past. I want peace from any stress from today. But when Jesus came into this world, he didn't expect to live his life for himself. He expected to achieve peace, and the way he achieved peace was through immense sacrifice. Today we are called to continue his work in bringing peace into this world. And how he did it was... He loved every person, no matter where they came from. The Samaritans, who were hated, he loved them. The poor, who were considered uh, cursed, or they were paying the prices of, of, the, of the people, of their ancestors who committed sins, they were loved. He wanted to break the divisions that man created. He wanted to bring people together, and he didn't care what people thought. In fact, he fought the way he fought this war was through love, mercy, and grace. That's how he, he broke division lines. Friends, family, today we see a lot of division. And I, I fear that going into this coming election, which I'm, I'm just stressed out about, I fear that there's going to be more division. But I call us to think back to the story of a, of a baby who didn't know division, who didn't know race, who didn't know party lines, just knew Jesus just wanted peace on earth and goodwill to all. And how he did it is he loved every single person. And it's easy to say, love your neighbor, very hard to do. Martin Luther King knew. He even said in that very same sermon in 1967, it's hard to like someone, it's hard to like someone because you have to be affectionate towards them. But to love someone, I love the people who are hurting my people. Because they were also created in the image of God, just as I was. I want to call us for, to achieve peace by loving harder than we ever loved before. By stopping, stop, stop the thinking of we're divided in some way. I have family in Japan, and uh, I guess that's why I like to think globally. Let's love everybody, every single person we meet, because we are not going to fight against evil by bringing in more division and more... Let's stop. Let's, let's bring in the story of a baby, the peace of a baby being born. Let's instead bring... Let's fight against evil with love, mercy and grace because people don't see it that often anymore people need to see it that is how they see god so when you encounter people you don't like love them that's hard that requires sacrifice you don't think it was hard to die on a cross that was the price of peace when you disagree with someone love them when someone hurts you Love them. When someone, someone just doesn't believe the way you do, love them anyway. Because somehow God is going to work in their hearts. 
through you. Jesus didn't care what people looked like. In fact, God's ultimate mission that he gave to the Israelites in Genesis 12 was for them to bless all nations. Not just the United States. Well, back then the United States didn't exist. But I'm saying today we are not just to bless the United States. We are to bless all the nations. So how do we start living for other people? How do we start loving every single person we meet? One way is to serve on the serve day. We're, we're serving unaccompanied immigrant children. You know, Bev, the, the girl, the lady who leads that entire sector, she told us that a lot of, that they don't, they don't publicize volunteer opportunities in this area because a lot of people would prote protest them or tell them that they're wrong because of certain legalities, because of party th politics, really. And that hurt my heart because these kids don't know party lines. These kids don't have families with them. That's where we start. That's how we start loving today. That's how peace is achieved today. It's not through what we've been doing for thousands of years. It doesn't work. What's going to work is that we love even when it hurts. Because it will hurt. Jesus showed us love hurts. But it's the best thing for this world. And eventually, we will see peace because love was the way all along. Jesus knew. And guess what? We have the hope that death, even if we die, even when we die, evil isn't going to win because Jesus came back and we're coming back too. So we have nothing to lose, people. Nothing. Peace is the goal. Love is the way. And our hope is that we will, we will rise again and this world will be perfected in the way that God had intended all along. And it all started, not with a sword, but with a manger. So let's change our tactics today. So this Christmas, start, keep loving. Because I know this congregation is really good at loving, but love until it hurts. Love sacrificially. Love people you didn't think you, you would love this Christmas. Give in a way that requires sacrifice. Giving is sacrifice. Christmas isn't, isn't just about getting gifts. It isn't about getting gifts. It's about receiving the best gift that we could ever receive in God our from God our Father, and that is Jesus. And I'm so grateful that Jesus' story is not like any other story in this world. And it's the one that's going to change it for good. Let's pray. Dear God, Father, Savior, friend, counselor, baby in a manger. God, you are all things to us. Peace is, it seems such a distant dream, but I know that you're working today every single moment to achieve it. I know that Jesus' ultimate sacrifice was to bring peace on earth and goodwill to all. And God, I know the peace I received with your salvation is immense. It's great. It's freeing. I pray that we continue to spread that peace that we, that we feel within us to all others. And the only way to do that is through the same way that you showed it to us, and that's through love, mercy, grace, hope, faith. We take on this challenge to, to continue your work, to continue Jesus' ministry, to bring peace on earth, not through the ways of man, but through your way alone. We love you. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you please stand as we, as we sing Silent Night? Because that, that night was a silent and peaceful one. So let's sing hoping that that night will come alive again in us.
closing prayer, I just want to jump in here. If I can beg Zach to come up here. Yay! Yay, Zach! I, I'm springing this on him, but I hadn't seen him for a while. He's been enjoying his honeymoon and new wedding and marriage and all that. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, uh, when we had our service at the beach, Zach was baptized into Christ, and so that was an awesome time, and we have our video and everything. But, uh, but I, I wanted to have a chance to uh, give Zach his plaque, and this is, uh, Zach, this is a, it says, Baptized into Christ September 1st, 2019 by me uh, and Sunny Hills Church of Christ, Fullerton, California. Never forget where to go to strength, and the passage from Isaiah here says, The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He'll not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. And they will walk and not be faint. That's in Isaiah 40. So I want to give this to you, and we're just excited about your baptism and your commitment to Christ. And God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, praise God. So Christmas, um, any of you feel any extra pressure during Christmas? I do, and I try my hardest not to celebrate it, and I'm under immense pressure. So those of you who really celebrate it, I can't imagine what you're going through. I love the message so much. An easy way, a way to show love, to show the light of Jesus, when you're at the mall and maybe you're finding your way through the parking lot and it's not going how you would wish and some other driver cuts you off or something or just in traffic, you know, drivers sometimes will drive poorly. I know when I drive poorly, I know that I have done so. I don't need someone to honk the horn at me. So cut them some slack. Show them love that way. Don't, uh, you know, speak in tongues at them. <laughs> Little ways to show our light. There are offer offering boxes in the back. If you feel so led, that money will be put to good use. It'll help spread the word. And I, I encourage you to remember this Unite service Invite your friends to it. We've tried so hard to make this a very friendly and inviting service. So tell your friends. Let them know. Uh, and I've babbled long enough. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the gift of your son who came, he lived, and then he died and he rose. He did it all for us so that we can become your children, that we're in your family. So when you look at us through Christ, you see Jesus. We thank you for that love. Be with us through this, this difficult time. Whether people are stressed at this time. So help us to take an extra beat to show your peace, to show your love, to let your light shine. I pray that uh, we will love more, Father, those who we have a hard time loving, that we will realize those are the ones we need to love. Your love. Heal her, Father. Give her comfort. Comfort the family of Carol. Give them your peace. Let your love be felt. Maybe as a family here at Sunny Hills, grow together in love towards each other in a way that we want to share with the community, our neighbors, the people we work with. May we never forget you, Father. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, everyone. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Merry Christmas.